Hello everyone, welcome to this video tutorial. Today I'm going to show you guys how to create the Pinterest style layout as you can see in front of you where all these tiles or um, different heights but yet they're stuck next to each other. And I'm also going to make it responsive just to give you guys an idea of how that's done. So alright, let's get started. We're going to jump inside, open whatever fa your favorite text editor you have. In my case, I'm using Brackets by Adobe. Um, you can use whatever you choose to use. So. In the body tag of brackets, we are going to um, create one div tag, and we're going to give it an ID of wrapper. Now, inside our wrapper tag, we're going to create another div tag, and we're going to give it an ID of uh, what should we call this? Let's call it columns. Now, inside our column tags, we're going to create another div tag, and we're going to give this a class of grid. Let's call that grid. Okay, now inside a grid tag, we're going to create two tags called the P tag, and we're going to have an image tag where we're going to put our images. And then we'll get a P tag here. All right, so inside our P tag, we're gonna put, we're just gonna paste the Larium Ipsum text. Um, you guys can grab Larium Ipsum from the web page if you called websites before. I am pretty sure you're familiar with what Larium Ipsum is. So let's paste that in. That's the Larium Ipsum code, and I'm gonna grab a image from the web, and I'm gonna use different images from all over the web. I'm just gonna go to Google search, search for some images, and I'm gonna paste them in. You can pick whatever images you choose. I'm just gonna paste in that image, and if I hover over it. It will show you what that image is. So now I'm going to go ahead and create a bunch more of these grid tags right here. I'm going to create a bunch more of these grid tags and I'll be right back. Now we've created um, a whole bunch more of these. Sorry, I jumped inside my CSS tag, but now we create a bunch more of these. As you can see here, there's a whole bunch more um, that I create with different images and everything like that. And I'll show you what that looks like. See? This is a whole bunch of images and text at the moment, and we're going to style this bad boy out to make it look exactly as we want it to look. So, all right, let's get started here with this. Now, I already pre-created some of my CSS tags, so the ones that I pre-create, that's not really that important. I'm just going to paste in um, because it will make the tutorial go a lot faster. So I'm going to paste in my body tag, so you know, it's just a body tag, and add a background to it, and that's all that does. So, now we're going to do some of our wrapper tags. So, we're going to do a wrapper tag. And we're going to set a width on our wrapper tag. That's the, the tag that's housing everything inside of it. And we're going to set a width of 90%. And we're going to set a max width. You know, I'm just, let me just type these out, guys, and I'll be right back. I'll just come back and explain these out to you. I'm going to type them out and then paste them in while the video is going to explain them out to you so this video don't get too long. So for a wrapper tag, all I did was set them, um, a width of 90 pixels, a maximum width of 1,100 pixels, a minimum width of 400 pixels. I set the margin at the top to 50 and auto, meaning auto means it's going to center the, 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 the wrapper tag in the screen and that's what the, that does. Now let's set up our column so we're going to do our columns tag and I'm going to type that out as well and I'll be right back um, once I finish typing that out and show you guys. So a column is here so what I do is I set a web, web kit column count to 2 what this is saying is, and I'll show you, you'll see where this comes into play once we do the whole responsiveness of the, of, of the site. 
it's saying to set a column to two. So if we should type a whole bunch of text, it would split the text right down the middle in half, like you would see like um, how you're doing web pages and things like that. So it's just setting two stacks of those um, blocks, two columns, and everybody know what column is. And we're setting a column gap of 10 pixels and a column fill of auto. Column count to two again, this is from Mozilla Firefox. And then column count is for regular browsers like in Explorer, um, Opera, and so on and so forth. So basically, that's what that's doing. This code will be available for download, so you guys can download this and check it out as well. So let's move on to our grid layout now. And we're going to do our grid because I already have this pre-done because I don't want to be able to just sit there and type things out. So let's jump into our grid layout. I'm going to paste the code in and I'll explain the code out to you guys. So what we're doing, we're setting a grid display of inline block. That's the only way to get them to style like that if you set them as inline block. I'm doing a background of a light gray, so to speak, as you can see right there, it pops up. I'm doing a border color of also a slight light gray um, as well. I'm doing a box shadow of um, a, just a darker color so it will show around that box. I'm doing a margin of zero on the top, two pixels on the side, and 15 pixels on the bottom. And WebKit column break inside void is to make um, this not break the columns, where, where, where it's going to have these long columns going on the page. Instead, it's going to create a whole bunch of shorter columns. That, that's how we're going to achieve that stacked layout. So the grid div tag is going to be able to adjust as far as you can put content in it but all the other content next to it will stay whatever height they are and this is how we're gonna try and we're gonna achieve this um, stack um, layout so we're setting a padding on the inside of 15 pixels padding and extra padding on the bottom at 5 pixel webkit background linear gradient so we're just doing a background gradient color um, for those stacks and opacity of 1 meaning it's a, it's a true opacity we're, doing a, we're setting a transition of 0 0.2 seconds on this, so it's just 0.2 of a second transition. So when they come in, it will transition in as two seconds. It'll fade in, doesn't look that like harsh or hard when, it, when the transition comes in. Now we're going to set the image for the grid. We're going to tell, we want the image for the grid to be 100% of the grid itself. That way, it will automatically adjust for the responsiveness of the, the, the grid. So we're going to set width, 100%, border, bottom, 1 pixel, solid, and light gray again. And then border, bottom, 15 pixels. No, padding, bottom, I'm sorry. 15 pixels and margin, bottom, 5 pixels. So that's what we set for the image. We're going to set up the, the, the P tag as well. And we, the P tag is going to be interesting. We're going to use a new property. Some of you might have seen it. Some of you might not um, have seen this before, where you set it to se separate pixel size, and it will um, the, the font inside it two separate um, pixel size, and it will um, adjust based on that. Uh, let's get rid of that. I didn't mean to paste all of that in. Like I said, I do have the CSS pre. Uh, give me a moment, guys. My phone is going off here. Sorry about that, guys. Um, so what we do, we say font 12 pixels slash 18 pixels area sign serve. So meaning, when we're at the, our maximum, it's going to use this 18 pixel. When we drop down to the minimum, when it becomes responsive, it's going to use this 12 pixels. And we just set in a dark, um, um, kind of an ash gray font color on the, on the thing. And we set in a margin of 0 pixels. Now we're going to jump into the responsive side of things. This I'm just going to copy completely and paste it in. That way you guys can see. Um, and I don't want the tutorial to be too long as I said before. So let's just paste this in completely, the, re the responsive layout. So here's the responsive layout. What we're starting with, and you always want to put, for this type of layout, you always want to put the smallest number at the top. So we're saying at 500 in pixels width, 560 pixels width, we want three columns to, to, to be um, achieved. At a 780 width, we want four columns to be achieved. At 1100 
pixels width or larger, we want five columns to be achieved. Now, if you remember when we talked about in the beginning when we set the, the columns to two, when the browser becomes lower than 560 pixels, then this one kicks in and it's only two columns next to each other. So let's save this. And we're going to go back to the file that we have and we're going to preview it and let you guys see what we achieved here. Let's refresh. There we go. There's some there's something wrong here a little bit. I'm going to go back in and see what I did wrong here. Give me a moment, guys. I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I realized what I did wrong. I typed the column. Um, I misspelled the column here, and it was a different spelling in my CSS. So that's what happened um, with that. So um, if we go back to our browser, Yep, as you can see, everything is fixed. It's the same Pinterest layout as we have, the same the images as we have, and you see we have this stack type layout. So I'm going to change a few of these and add a whole bunch of text in, 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 some, in one of these, and you'll see how the effects change on page. So let's just copy this. Let's just do the first one. Let's just copy this. I'm going to paste it, the L'Oreal Ipsum text, in a few times just to see the effect we get. No, let's break this. Let's copy this. Paste it in a few. Paste it in again. Paste it in twice up there. And let's save this and jump back to our browser and refresh our browser. As you can see, you see how this one becomes really long, but nothing else close to it was affected. Everything um, close to it stays exactly as they are. So when it's wide, we have one, two, three, four, five. So we have five when it's 1,100 1, pixels are wider. If we drop this down to lower than 1,100 pixels, we get one, two, three, four, as we have, as we stated in our CSS. Now, if we go lower than the 780 pixels, now we have one, two, three stack. Now let's go lower than that, and that's where that two comes in that we stated at the beginning. Now we got one, two, line up next to each other, and that's creating an effective grid layout down to a mobile size browser. So guys, thanks for watching. Hope this helps. Code will be in the description. You guys can download that, use it, study it, and create some cool looking websites. Have a great day. Happy coding.